populasi itu sekolah kebangsaan. Mana semua tingkatan satu sekolah ke, menengah kebangsaan. Kecuali kita beri limitasi lah maknanya ini untuk sekolah jenis ini saja. Maknanya sekolah awam saja ataupun sekolah swasta saja ataupun semua sekali kan. Jadi kita kena define betul-betul lah populasi ni apa. Terutama yang nak buat kajian apa kuantitatif kan. Uh, jangan tiba-tiba je dapat sampel kan. Tiba-tiba sampel dia 200. Saya kata mana dapat 200 ni. Uh, jadi you tak boleh nak jawab dalam viva nanti kalau you tak define populasi dia berapa dan dari mana dapat uh, number 200 tu. Uh, jadi itu uh, kita kena faham lah. Eh. Jadi biasanya populasi ni payah nak dapat eh, sebab Yalah, dia jumlah yang besar jadi kita kena go through authority dan sebagainya lah macam ministry untuk dapatkan populasi ni. Soalan saya kalau tak dapat populasi ni macam mana? You duk cari tanya orang tapi tak ada orang yang boleh nak bagi tahu you populasi dia berapa. So macam mana kita nak buat? Jadi balik kepada soalan saya tadi. Kalau kita duk cari eh, populasi tak jumpa juga. Maknanya tak ada sumber. Jadi kita boleh buat satu lagi dia panggil estimation lah. Eh. Estimation maknanya kita Sekarang buat kita anggaran lah. Uh, ya? Populasi nah, yang anggaran. kita anggarkan. Nah, kita anggarkan berdasarkan evidence lah. Jangan you anggar tapi tak ada apa kan. Tak ada asas you buat anggaran tu. Mesti ada asas lah anggaran tu. Okey. Mungkin daripada apa. Mungkin you tak dapat populasi sekarang tapi you ada maklumat tentang populasi yang sebelum ni kan. Jadi you boleh buat anggaran lah. Okay yang keduanya sampel. Sampel ni apa? Sampel ni ialah subset daripada populasi tu lah. Subset. Uh, cuma kalau dalam quantitative research kita digalakkan lah untuk ambil apa sampel ni secara random lah secara awak. Kenapa kita perlu ambil dia secara awak? Kenapa tak convenient je, convenient kan. Convenient ni kita macam sekarang ni, ramai yang buat convenient ni. Contohnya dia buat questionnaire, dia tak, uh, populasi tak um, tak tahu. Uh, dia cuma kata, oh, saya tebarkan sajalah instrumen ni pada siapa yang apa, siapa yang terima, dia jawab lah. Uh, iaitu dia panggil convenient. Eh. Convenient sampling ataupun uh, purposeful sampling. Purposeful maknanya dia ada target lah, target populasi tu dan diantar saja mana yang dapatlah. Ha, itu tidak dikira sebagai uh, random lah. <coughs> Jadi orang duk tanya saya kenapa ya kita perlu random ni ha? <coughs> ah. Ah, siapa boleh jawab uh, soalan saya ni? Kenapa kita perlu ada uh, random sampling? Kenapa? Ha? Ah? Maksudnya dia berpeluang juga untuk dipilih orang peluang yang ya. sama? Yalah betul lah. Tapi dia malas nak buat. <laughs> dia malas nak buat kan. Dia tak nak cari populasi tak mau cari tiba-tiba uh, buat yang instrumen instrumen tiba-tiba dia tebar saja kan. Bukan saja dia tebar, dia suruh kawan dia pula tebar. Jadi dia sendiri tak tahu siapa sampel dia kan. Dia kata ah you tebarlah dalam you punya apa, you whatsapp, you group you. Yang ini pun tebarlah dalam ah, yang itu tak dikira random lah sebab you tak tahu siapa you punya sampel kan. Kalau random ni dia dah dia dah buat sampling tu dia dah tahu dah siapa yang dia akan hantar lah. Ha. Jadi kalau boleh kita elakkan lah you buat PhD ke master janganlah suruh apa kawan-kawan you tebarkan sebab tu dah jadi tak dah tak jadi apa uh, random sampling sebab tak ada frame tak ada apa dia panggil uh, sampling frame. Sampling frame ni maksudnya kita dah tahu populasi dia, dah tahu uh, daripada populasi kita dah cabut dah nombor-nombor dia maknanya kita dah tahu siapa you punya participant ataupun respondent, you dah tahu dah. Jadi tak payahlah pergi pada kawan you suruh tebar kan, you sendiri lah akan tebar kepada dia you, sebab you dah tahu dah orang A, B, C ni yang dalam uh, populasi tu yang you dah pilih secara random. Okay. Tapi saya lihat ramai lagi yang dok minta tolong kawan-kawan dia tebar. Kawan-kawan pun tak tahu populasi you siapa kan. Tebar-tebar saja. Ha. Ini dalam viva ni kita akan tanya ni macam mana you buat sampling frame you. Ha. Ini yang kadang-kadang problem ya eh, dalam viva. Kalau you tak tahu sampling you dia pakai ambil itu dia akan dikira convenient. Bila convenient ni apa bahana dia? Hmm, tolong beritahu saya apa bahana je kalau you buat ni secara convenient ataupun secara Purpose, purposeful sampling 
uh, yang tidak dipanggil non probabilistic mean sampling lah non probabilistic sampling apa bahan dia data tak tepat doktor dia bahana dia ah uh, yalah betul uh, bahana dia ialah you tak boleh guna semua inference statistik yang advance lah macam t-test ANOVA MANOVA MANCOVA semua tak boleh guna sebab statistik tu semua ialah statistik yang probabilistic mean statistik jadi dia perlu kepada probabilistic mean sampling lah uh, you boleh guna oh, yang, you boleh guna mean yang sedikit biasa lah apa dia apa dia kita tak boleh generalize ke prop kalau kita buat uh, uh, apa simplify uh, sampling yeah, ni? Convenient memang betul. Tak boleh satu tak boleh generalize. Tak boleh. Yang kedua you tak boleh guna semua statistik tu. Jadi you boleh guna mean statistik. Kalau you PhD you guna mean <laughs> kalau you buat quantitative research you guna mean dengan standard deviation. You orang kata ini very very kindergarten maknanya tak capai lah tahap PhD you. You, you, you tak guna advanced punya statistik kan? You kena guna basic saja statistik kan. Dia, dia kata tak capai lah. Ini kita bagi you master je lah. Tak payah bagi PhD pun. Ha, itu bahananya kalau you ambil secara convenient ni. Hmm. So itulah saya kata make sure bila you buat PhD level ke, buat quantitative ke, buat modeling ke, buat apa fact analysis ke, uh, even buat survey pun kan. Kalau you nak guna apa, manova, mangkova semua, you kena tu lah you kena ada apa sampling frame yang random eh ok yang ketiga ni sampling maknanya cara you me memungut data lah eh <coughs> bila saya sebut sampling frame tu maksud dia apa dalam bye bye kita kata you punya sampling frame macam mana ini ini apa ni nomenclature yang kita guna lah eh dalam research dia panggil sampling frame. Sampling frame ni maksudnya you tahu dah populasi dia berapa eh. Contohnya kalau saya kata okey populasi dia n besar ni ada 100 ribu lah eh. Seluruh seluruh Malaysia ada katakan budak tingkat kata satu. Contohnya lah kita nak buat uh, form one student dalam uh, sekolah menengah kebangsaan kan. Semualah termasuk Sabah Sarawak semua kan di Malaysia lah mungkin dari populasi daripada kementerian kata ada 100 ribu ok you dah tahu dah list dia uh, sekarang ni kita nak tahu apa dia dia punya N kecil lah kalau kita ambil secara random apa mudah kan uh, rawak mudah jadi berapa sebenarnya dia punya sampel ni minimum sampel jadi dah ada dah, uh, saya tahu semua yang tahu kita boleh gunakan jadual sampel sah kan uh, jadual sampel sah ni uh, ada beberapa lah ya yang paling yang paling popular sekali Kriji and Morgan lah ya banyak orang guna Kriji and Morgan saya panggil KNG je, KNC, eh uh, KM jadi jadual ni dia ada dah, kalau populasi beberapa populasi dia kita dia bagi tahu N dia berapa Uh, contohnya kalau tadi 100,000 mungkin N dia ini saya uh, ambil je lah saya tak ada yang exact ni contoh ni. katakan dia kata 365 lah contoh ya yeah. uh, jadi you ambil lah minimum tu tapi biasanya kita akan lebihkan lah uh, kalau kita minimum 340 kita kata ok kita ambil 400 kenapa biasanya kita lebihkan ni Hmm. Ada orang boleh jawab kenapa kita tak ambil exactly 365 walaupun uh, table tu uh, kerja yang mungkin kata 365 Kenapa kita kena lebihkan dia? Takut yang hmm. ada error uh, yeah. uh, jawab main-main <laughs> yeah, rosak Haa uh, undi rosak kan undi rosak maknanya questionnaire tu dia tak jawab semuanya ataupun dia bulatkan semua sekali kan item 1 hingga 20 tu semua dia bulatkan yang sama je ataupun dia tulis uh, apa tu jadi kita tahulah dia tak baca dan sebagainya dan jadi itu kita tolak lah jadi kita lebihkan supaya kita boleh buang lah mana-mana uh, apa tu instrumen ataupun uh, kalau kita guna soal sidik tu yang kita rasa memang tak complete ataupun dia memang tak baca ataupun memang dia main-main je lah uh, jadi kita masih ada lagi minimum number lah Tadi saya kata kerja emogen tu satu je, dia ada juga yang Cochrane 
punya table dan juga kohon ya. uh, ini jadual yang dah ada lah ya. tapi sekarang ni uh, ada juga yang menggunakan uh, G power G power ni apa G power ni dia macam conversion lah uh, dia conversion, you bagi je letak je populasi dia akan keluar lah berapa minimum sample yang ada ok So itu basically saya akan uh, akan apa go through yang lebih detail lah kemudian ini sejak se set induksi baru ni set induksi. Okey, ya ini biasanya yang kita nak you faham lah ya. So, yang pertama epistemology ni epistemology ni ialah apa nature of your study tu lah apa dia apa ciri-ciri kajian you kan, you kena tahu lah dia punya qualitative ke quantitative ke reka bentuk kajian dia apa uh, apa ciri-ciri uh, apa tu uh, populasi dia dan sebagainya yang kedua teori, teori ni ialah yang menerangkan fenomenan yang you nak kaji lah ya kalau nak kaji pasal apa tu emotional intelligence mesti ada teori tentang emotional intelligence kalau nak teori uh, nak kaji pasal Contohnya apa ni self esteem dia, uh, motivasi dia dan sebagainya mesti ada teori lah yang, yang menerangkan uh, Sebab apa kita perlu teori ni? Tak boleh jawab sebab apa kita perlu teori ni? Kenapa kita buat kajian tanpa teori? Ini untuk yang buat uh, quantitative lah ya, qualitative yang grounded theory dia akan datang kemudian lah, teori tu datang kemudian Tapi yang buat yang quantitative, biasanya kita akan mula dengan teori lah kita perlukan teori ni sebab kalau tidak dia terlalu besar lah kajian kita tu kan tak tahu kita nak capai yang mana sebab dalam dunia ni dia dia aja banyak teori ni maksud perspektif lah banyak perspektif yang you nak tengok daripada perspektif mana kan kalau dalam agama kita kata mazhab lah daripada mazhab mana you nak tengok ni kalau tidak terlalu besar lah kan uh, kalau tidak is a too big dan tak tahu you dar, you lihat benda ni daripada Uh, sudut mana eh jadi teori biasanya ialah <coughs> suatu pernyataan umum lah yang menerangkan tentang sesuatu fenomenan tu jadi mesti ada teori yang relevan dengan kajian lah ya carilah teori yang relevan uh, dia ada learning teori, ada teaching teori, ada emotional teori, ada psychological teori ada behavioral teori, ada constructivist teori dan sebagainya Berapa teori yang perlu ada? Bagi saya minimum tiga teori lah, tiga teori atau lebih Minimum teori, jangan pakai satu teori je Jadi orang kata kalau satu teorinya um, maknanya terlalu sedikit lah, pembacaan you terlalu sedikit ya. Okay, uh, kemudian kita ada hypothesis, yang ini untuk yang kuantitatif juga Uh, biasanya kita akan guna null lah, null maksudnya kita nak test dia sama ada hypothesis tu diterima atau ditolak, itu saja hypothesis ni dia ada dua option saja, satu diterima atau ditolak diterima maknanya tidak ada beza lah, kalau null hypothesis kita kata tidak ada perbezaan kan uh, kalau kita terima null hypothesis tu based on your data maknanya uh, tidak ada beza lah tapi dalam research kita biasanya nak yang kita tolak maknanya kita tolak mana ada perbezaan supaya ada kesan ya. Eh. Kalau tiada perbezaan maknanya tak ada kesan lah. Tak ada kesan ya. Eh. Jadi tak ada kesan maknanya basically uh, tak gunalah you punya ni. You punya research ni kan tak ada kesan. Maksud kesan ni contohnya kita kata vaksin lah. Saya buat vaksin ni nak tahu vaksin ni berkesan tidak kan. Tapi tiba-tiba dapati tidak ada kesan. Maknanya orang pakai vaksin pun tak ada kesan, orang yang tak pakai pun tak ada kesan jadi maknanya tak is useless lah uh, ini yang problem ni nak publish a paper kalau you punya research tu semua null hypothesis diterima maknanya tidak ada kesan sedangkan you punya teori kata ada kesan lah kalau gunakan apa gunakan modul yang baru ni ada kesan kan dia lebih uh, lebih berkesan daripada uh, yang tradisional uh, kita nak supaya ada kesan eh ini kadang-kadang banner saja modul tapi tak test pun dia berkesan tidak ha, itu pun satu lagi yang tak guna 
Ada tak ni? Dia cuma tengok usability saja kan. Dia banner saja tiba-tiba tak test pun sama ada benda tu berkesan ke tak berkesan. Dia cuma tanya pakar je. Pakar memang lah. Pakar tu bukan usernya. Pakar tu tengok saja kan. Macam vaksin lah. Pakar boleh tengok vaksin tu tapi sebenarnya yang guna vaksin tu orang orang biasalah kita kan semua. Kita buat modul ni bukan untuk untuk expert tu, untuk bukan untuk pakar tu. Kita buat modul ni untuk pelajar kan. Jadi kita kena pergi pada pelajar lah akhirnya untuk tengok kesan dia. Ini dia berhenti setakat setakat pakar saja kan. Nah itu yang payah nak publish pun you punya ni kalau setakat pakar saja kata ini okey kan. Sedangkan yang yang sebenarnya yang akan menerima modul tu ialah pelajar lah. Kalau pelajar tu dia punya pencapaiannya meningkat mana kita tahulah modul tu berkesan lah kan. Bukan setakat pakar saja kata ini berkesan. Nah itu dia punya pandangan lah tentang you punya modul tu. Okey. <tuh> Mungkin dululah, 10 tahun dulu bolehlah kita kita buat modul yang kita kata usability saja kan. Kita tengok kata, pakar kata ni usable. Tapi sekarang ni dah tak bolehlah sebab kita nak publish kan. Kebanyakan apa ni editor dah tak nak terima lah. Kalau you saja bangun saja, you tak test pun dia punya keberkesanan dia. Kesan modul tu. Jadi saya nasihatlah kepada yang ini banyak ni saya lihat ni. ya FPM pun banyak buatnya ni. FPTV pun banyak juga buat ni especially yang master kan ada siapa kaya PhD pun ada buat usability saja itu tak boleh lah sepatutnya kita pergi pada kesan lah eh. bila kesan dia adalah uh, control group dan sebagainya lah control group, experimental group ada soalan ke? jangan saya cakap je you tak ada, ada soalan tanya lah uh, kenapa tak boleh just guna usability saja kan ini banyak yang buat ni kadang-kadang supervisor pun tak faham juga dia suruh you buat usability kan kalau saya examiner saya tak 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 terima lah kalau you just usability <coughs> ok ni dah ramai takut ni kan <laughs> sebab kita nak tahu kesan dia kan jangan kita banner saja macam orang banner vaksin lah tiba tak tak test vaksin tu siapa nak nak guna kalau you tak test vaksin tu walaupun pakar kata ok uh. alright uh. Research design ini perlu ada. Cuma tadi beza lah ada orang tanya apa beza prof teori dengan model ni. Ha. Dua-dua kena ada ke? Saya kata dua-dua kena ada lah. Sebab apa dua-dua kena ada? Dia macam payung lah prof. Yalah. Betul. So, teori kan. ni dia umum saja. Teori ni dia pernyataan umum saja tentang suatu fenomena kan. Dia tidak ada, dia tak sebut pun elemen-elemen yang spesifik lah. Kalau ada kan very general. Tapi model lah yang ada, yang ada elemen-elemen kan. Contoh kalau kita pakai, kita nak kaji EQ kan, Emotional Intelligence ha, kita pakailah model apa ni, uh, Goldman Goldman ada lima elemen dalam EQ model dia walaupun dia ada teori, teori mengatakan bahawa orang yang boleh mengawal emosi itu dia ada Emotional Intelligence lah kan itu secara umumnya teorinya tapi yang mengatakan apa elemen yang perlu ada dalam uh, apa Emotional Intelligence tu kita ambil kita ambil model lah. Contohnya Goldman dia kata ada lima iaitu social skill lah, uh, empathy, management lah, whatever lah ya. Yang perlu ada dalam itu, itu yang kita perlu ada supaya apa? Elemen ni kenapa penting? Kerana inilah nak buat nak buat instrumen tu kita kena ada elemen tu lah kan. Elemen A kata social science lah. Kita tanyalah uh, social skill. Kita kena tanyalah tentang social skill dia. Elemen yang kedua empathy. Kita kena tanyalah tentang empathy dia. Kalau tengok teori memang tak ada lah benda-benda tu. Tapi kita ada model. Model yang mengatakan elemen-elemen yang ada. Okey, itu model Goldman lah untuk EQ kan. Uh, dalam EQ ada tiga model yang utama. Uh, Goldman, uh, Solovey and Mayer dan juga uh, Baron kan. Ada tiga model yang utamalah dalam EQ kalau you buat kajian EQ. Emotional Intelligence. Okay, uh, then research research design ni mesti spesifik lah. Saya tak maulah you kata saya buat qualitative, saya buat quantitative. Itu itu paradigm lah. Eh. Itu paradigma saja. Dia bukan research design. Research design mesti spesifik. Contohnya you buat apa? You buat survey method, you buat modeling, you buat correlational study, you buat uh, apa ni? Uh, experimental design ataupun quasi experimental design. Itu yang quantitative lah. Kalau you buat apa yang qualitative lah, uh, Uh, etnografi kan, fenomenologi, 
symbolic interaction dan sebagainya. Ini kadang-kadang saya tanya research design apa, dia kata, oh saya guna questionnaire. Questionnaire itu bukan research design kan? <laughs> Pro? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Boleh so, tanya? Nak tanya Pro. Sorry Pro boleh. ganggu. Boleh, boleh. Belum tanya banyak pun boleh. Saya uh, memang suka orang bertanya. <laughs> Tadi Pro ada cakap teori kan. Contoh saya, saya ambil tiga teori uh, dan juga satu model. Model ni betul tak Pro? Saya ambil model ni untuk saya punya model pembinaan modul. Teori pula saya tengok kepada saya punya DV based on teori. Yelah teori Betul, tu ada elemen ke? Itu yang soalan saya. Teori tu ada tak elemen spesifik yang dia sebut dalam teori tu? Ah yes. Contohnya nak nak tengok contoh saya ambil CBT dan uh, motivational interviewing lah untuk saya buat integratekan dua teori ni yang daripada CBT. Ha, okay, CBT tu. Aha. Uh, kognitif uh, tingkah laku. Kompetensi. Ah. Kompetensi base. Tingkah laku prof. Tingkah laku. Kita uh, saya buat delikuensi prof. Modul dalam delikuensi. So CBT tu model ke teori? Teori. Boleh? Siapa? Uh, tak ingat. Uh, apa dia pun tak ingat apa dia? CBT tu teori siapa? Teori Aaron Beck. Aaron Beck, okay. Jadi ada elemen lah dalam CBT tu ada elemen ke? Ada ada elemen. Cuma hmm. saya confirm dengan model. Model pula saya ambil contoh model uh, apa tu untuk AD eh, model yang kita ambil untuk peminaan modul tu kita panggil model AD betul ke Prof? itu tak apa itu dia ada dua satu model yang berkaitan dengan teori satu lagi model pembangunan model pembangunan tu bila kita ada macam nak buat modul ke nak buat apa apps ke nak buat ABM ke software ke kita ada model pembangunan lah tapi yang saya maksudkan ni model yang berkaitan dengan teori tu sebab kadang-kadang teori tu dia tidak spesifik ya dia tidak spesifik uh, ada elemen maknanya dia menerangkan secara umum saja jadi kita perlu ada, kalau dia terang secara umum maknanya kita kena ada model lah yang akan support teori ni dan uh, daripada model ni kita ada elemen-elemen yang kita nak kaji lah okay. tapi kalau dalam teori tu memang dah ada elemen tak apalah okey lah kalau teori, teori dalam teori tu sendiri dah ada elemen alright Hmm. Cuma Jadinya teori ni dia 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 ada elemen Satunya teori MI ni saya ambil tadi ada tiga teori kan So satu lagi teori ni dia MI motivational So dia ada model dalam tu juga Model TTM Transterical behavior okay uh, lah. uh, Betul. As long as dia, dia berkaitan lah As long as dia berkaitan Okay, okay. Right. Bagus lah Itu bagus sebab um, elemen ni yang kita nak tahu ni Elemen ni yang kita akan buat dia punya uh, instrumen eh kita nak uh, tanya, okey dalam instrumen ada berapa elemen kan yang tiap-tiap elemen tu kita akan tanya soalan lah. Of course lah, janganlah tanya apa ni uh, satu elemen satu soalan tak boleh lah kan. Satu elemen satu item tak 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 boleh lah. Dia satu elemen tu sekurang-kurangnya ada enam item eh. Enam item. Ya. Jadi kalau you ada lima item, uh, elemen minimum ada enam, tiga uh, puluh lah item. Okey, tapi item tu janganlah panjang pula kan. Uh, jangan sampai seratus uh, satu elemen tu ada ada dua puluh uh, item kan nanti orang tak akan nak, nak jawab, ya. Yeah. Jadi uh, jadi item untuk satu elemen tu lebih kurang enam hingga sepuluh item lah ya. Eh. Boleh boleh mengukur uh, elemen atau variable tu. Alhamdulillah. Lagi mana apa? Thank you Pak. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Cuma research design lah ya. Janganlah jawab dalam Bible tu kata research design, kata questionnaire lah, kata apa ni. Uh, tak, tu eksperimen. Haa, uh, janganlah. Yalah, research, research design ni banyak saya tanya. Apa research design? Uh, saya guna questionnaire. Apa research design? Saya guna interview. Itu semua bukan research design. Eh. Itu semua adalah instrumen. Jadi, make sure lah you jawab dalam Bible tu betul sikit ya. Eh. Jangan, jangan jawab yang tak betul lah ya. Eh. Okay, then kita ada lagi satu. Ini yang saya kata populasi and sampling ni biasanya dia ada satu ni lah, satu subtopik lah kalau yang buat quantitative research. Instrumentation ni maknanya selain instrumen yang kita beritahu yang saya suggest ialah mesti ada tiga lah kalau you uh, di peringkat PhD dan juga uh, Masters uh, kita cadang ada tiga instrumen pakai. Jangan depend on one instrument. Ini kadang-kadang pakai satu instrument je kan. Uh, 
uh, yang ni dia panggil triangulation ni triangulation ni dia triangle kan triangle dia ada tiga point maknanya tiga instrumen yang you akan bandingkan lah ya uh, data daripada tiga data set lah daripada tiga instrumen kenapa kita guna kena guna lebih daripada satu instrumen ni uh, ini kadang dalam viva saya tanya berapa instrumen pakai uh, prof pakai satu je ha, itu bahana lah tu itu kenapa tak boleh pakai satu instrumen saja ini pakai apa? Satu saya pakai questionnaire saja kan. Ha, itu mana lagi? Mana boleh you depend on satu instrument kan? Dia untuk buat judgement uh, kepada kita punya kajian ni kita perlu ada beberapa instrument lah supaya mereka dapat validate di antara satu sama lain. Sebab kadang satu instrument tu kalau dia salah maknanya semua you punya data akan salah lah. Yeah. Alright. Data collection ni maknanya tadilah cara kita me, apa cara kita collect the data menggunakan instrumen yang ada lah uh, contoh tadi tiga instrumen tu ialah satu mungkin uh, ujian satu lagi soal sidik satu lagi uh, observation satu lagi interview kan itu ada empat instrumen okey in fact soal sidik tu dia boleh jadi dua instrumen eh, kalau you pandai lah saya selalu suruh pelajar saya, uh, questionnaire tu boleh jadi dua instrumen iaitu satu you pakai yang Likert scale tu yang ada lima poin ini kadang-kadang ada sampai sepuluh poin lah eh, iaitu bingung saya tu kalau sepuluh poin tu biasa pakai apa? lima dia ya, biasa kena lima, ha, lima poin lah jangan dah pakai banyak sangat tujuh lah ada yang sepuluh lah sembilan sebagainya yang kerana kita kena tahu tiap-tiap point tu apa dia punya maksud dia yang lima point pun susah nak nak differentiate kan uh, sangat setuju setuju lah tak pasti dah tidak setuju sangat tidak setuju ni kadang-kadang dia tanya je yang tak pasti pun tak ada lah sekarang ni setuju empat je point sangat setuju setuju apa tu tidak setuju mana dia punya tu kalau orang tu tak tahu nak jawab macam mana dia kena ada middle point lah eh middle point dia yang tu lah yang tengah-tengah tu tak pasti tu uh, kadang dia dia buat lima point juga tapi sangat setuju setuju kurang setuju apa beza kurang setuju tak setuju tu kan confusing lah dia mesti balance lah eh you punya skala tu mesti balance uh, jangan satu tiga yang setuju ada tiga yang tak setuju ada dua kan tak boleh lah macam tu sebab tak balance lah ya <coughs> ni ada saya lihat je skala-skala ni dia kata prof tak perlulah tak pasti ni kan sebab tak pasti saya kata itu yang paling penting tu tak pasti tu sebab apa bila tak pasti tu kita boleh buat improvement kalau dia tak pasti kan tak sesuatu tu baru kita buat improvement kalau semua kata setuju maknanya tak ada improvement lah kita buat boleh buat ok tak ada soalan ni ini pun bergantung pada supervisor lah kadang-kadang ada yang mazhab-mazhab yang tu <coughs> bagi saya bila mesti balance eh. you punya skala tu mesti balance kalau dua setuju mesti dua tak setuju dua point lah tak setuju dan tengah-tengah ni mesti yang yang neutral point lah eh. Prof, yeah. maksud Prof, kalau data collection untuk eksperimental uh, memang saya ada tiga instrumen, cumanya kalau macam ni kan ujian soal sidik dengan temu buat okey, soal sidik memang kita buat pre and post Eh hey, mana boleh soal sidik pre and post, mana siapa ajar you? Pre and post mana ada soal sidik pre and post Dia semua buku-buku kata pre uh, pre test, post test Pre test, pre test Haa, tak uh, ada pre question ni, post question tak ada <laughs> <laughs> Pre-test, post-test, okay ujian Pra-ujian dan post-ujian itu betul hmm. Oh pra, okay, okay hmm. Okay, yang tu lah pra ya okay. Jangan okay. you be kreatif lah Buat pre-questionnaire, uh, post-questionnaire Ni tak ada, tak, tak ada orang ajar pun <laughs> yang tu. Okay, just buat Pre-test, post-test, kerana itu objektif lah ya Maknanya kita nak yang objektif Untuk tahu dia punya pencapaian Temu bual, okay, temu bual pra Saya hanya temu bual Uh, facilitator yang buat eksperimen tu sahaja uh, uh, betul ke Prof? you boleh buat dua satu uh, yang mengajar yang mengajar tu mengajar model, yang kedua pelajar lah pelajar tu kita nak uh, interview juga sama dia, dia tahu dia suka tak apa ni uh, yang eksperimental punya group lah sebab eksperimental tu yang uh, itu kan yes. 
Ya, uh-huh. Yang buat modul yang baru tu Sama juga pengajar tu yang eksperimen je Yang kontrol dengan tu tak payah Kontrol tak payah So oh. interview interview hanya yang tu saja Yang experimental group lah uh, Yang mengajar dan juga yang menerima modul tu Iaitu pelajar uh. oh, Kalau okay. tidak, kalau tidak uh-huh. kita tak boleh nak Kita tak boleh validate lah Kadang cikgu kata oh, bagus Tapi kita tak tanya pula student Student kata apa? Bagus tak bagus? Uh. Jadi tanya dua-dua eh uh, Guru yang mengajar eksperimen Dan juga pelajar dalam kumpulan pula eksperimen tu Uh, kita boleh interview you dan juga boleh bagi questionnaire pada pelajar tu juga Okey, yeah. Prof katakanlah masa Viva hmm. dia ada kontrari tau Prof Macam cuknya soal selidik data cantik hmm. Tapi bila kita temu buah budak tu bagi tahu dia kurang faham sebenarnya Tapi data cantik ada tak killing soalan macam tu yang yang menjerat jugalah Prof Memang <laughs> betul kita nak yang tu lah kita nak supaya kita nak tahu betul-betul kalau tidak dia dia menipu lah dalam soal silik tu dia menipu jadi oh. bila kita interview baru kita boleh dapat tahu bahawa memang dia tak faham dan sebagainya ha. Itu so jawapannya ya, memang kita buat tu lah Maksudnya kita buat tu supaya kita boleh dapat uh, itulah kita boleh buat improvement lah nanti uh, cadangan kita supaya improvement dia punya modul ke whatever lah ya yeah. Uh, okay supaya uh, supaya transparent lah kita punya ni bukan kita fake eh? <laughs> kadang-kadang fake je dia jawab tu semua bagus itu ya itu kelemahan uh, questionnaire lah questionnaire ni biasanya dia akan jawab yang bagus-bagus je tu pasal kalau questionnaire pun kita boleh buat open ended lah eh? ujung tu ya, ini yang saya kata boleh jadi uh, questionnaire boleh jadi dua instrumen satu yang kita tanya secara Likert scale tu setuju tak setuju tu, uh, satu lagi kita boleh tanya dia open ya, di open ended uh, session lah di belakang supaya dia boleh beritahu kita apa yang apa apa yang dia suka tentang modul, apa yang tak suka tentang modul apa kalau dia boleh beri cadangan bagaimana nak improvekan modul tu kan semua dia boleh bagi tu jadi ya, itu sejarah semualah kalau boleh kalau buat question tu uh, wajib lah kalau saya pelajar saya saya wajibkan eh, dia ada open ended question di, di belakang iaitu session yang akhir sekali Open ended. Biasanya open ended kita tanya, tanya itulah apa kekuatan, kelemahan dia, apa yang dia boleh bagi cadangan untuk improvement. Itu biasanya ya. dan juga open ended tu kita boleh kita boleh validate uh, konstruk yang adalah. Kalau konstruk ada empat konstruk tu, tiap-tiap satu konstruk tu kita boleh tanya secara open ended juga lah ya. Selain daripada uh, dia jawab tentang apa dengan menggunakan like skill tu. Alright, itu uh, tentang uh, instrumen Data analysis ni ialah statistik yang you guna lah Kalau pakai quantitative tu Kalau you peringkat PhD kita nak uh, higher level of statistics lah Jangan pakai discrete saja Boleh tapi kena tambah dengan inferential lah statistik Itu pasal kalau nak buat inferential tu kena random lah eh. Okay, ini satu lagi isu uh, Jangan kita sebut lah kajian kita membuktikan ni ha? Banyak saya tengok ni dia menulis ni Kajian ini membuktikan ha, Kenapa tak boleh pakai ni kajian membuktikan Sebab in order to bukti you kena Ulang ha, Ulang kajian you banyak kali baru dan dapat uh, Dapatan yang sama baru boleh kata proof Jadi kalau you buat satu kajian saja tak boleh tahu lagi lah kan Mungkin you buat the next one uh, dapat kaj- dapatan yang lain pula kan Ha, jadi untuk selamat kita tak katalah kajian ini membuktikan kita kata kajian ini menunjukkan. So why we need uh, we should avoid uh, uh, writing our thesis saying that my research proof because proving must be repeated uh, many times before you can say uh, this thing proves. Yeah? So uh, just because you only did one experiment or one uh, study So it's it's not proving, eh? it's just showing that your data shows that, okay. So this can be explained by the <coughs> by the error, eh? type one error. Uh, we usually we set zero eh? point zero five. What type one error? Alpha level. Alpha level meaning that zero point zero five meaning that five uh, percent, eh? five over one hundred. Meaning that if you repeat your experiment, your study 100 times, you know that 5 times is wrong. Jadi, uh, or you can put uh, 0.01 alpha level, meaning that if you repeat your study 100 times, uh, one time should be wrong. 
So the question is, how many times did you repeat your study? You didn't repeat your study, you just do one. Jadi, uh, that's why you cannot say that this study proof. Eh? One research cannot prove anything. So be careful with your writing. All right, uh, how many variables in a research? Uh, maybe bachelor level, one variable is okay. Master, one or two variables. Uh, doctoral, two or more variables. Jangan. Don't ever at a doctoral page level, you only have one variable, one main variable. Kan? You will not reach the level of PhD if you only study one variable. Example, okay, I just study for my PhD, I just study self-esteem. Self-esteem is one variable. Lah. Uh, Self-esteem uh, dalam bahasa Melayu apa? Jati, jati diri eh? Okay, or you study one only motivation. One variable kan? It's not uh, acceptable at PhD level that you only study one variable. Nowadays lah, I'm not sure about 10 years ago, maybe acceptable. But now we need a multivariate, eh? multivariable multi for your PhD or master's degree. So, uh, sometimes your uh, your supervisor didn't advise you how many variables you should look into your study. So, you should, uh, now you learn from me that uh, at a doctoral level, you should have at least two uh, or more variables. Even you do experimental, there's uh, at least two variables. Uh. One is the independent variable, the other is dependent variable for the experimental design. Okay, this uh, common mistake, lack of IVDB in your topic. Okay, this one. Okay, this is uh, experimental design. You have IV, independent variable, and DB, the dependent variable. For example, the IV is your module on something, and the DB is the achievement of the student. Eh? So you have uh, two variables here. And also, you have uh, several variables on your demographic eh, variables gender, age, socioeconomic status, attitude, motivation, these all are the uh, moderator variables. So how many variables here? One is uh, IV, DB and moderator. Three variables here yeah, that you have here. <clears throat> okay, what is moderator? Moderator is uh, like IV but it's indirect, eh? indirect effect to your DB. IV is a direct effect to your DV, but moderator is indirect effect to your DV. So it's not only module that you know, affect the achievement of student, maybe other factors. These are the other factors that could uh, influence the, uh, the achievement of the student or your DV. <clears throat> so some students ask me, can we uh, do without moderator? Only we have IV, DV, I say no, because uh, in many cases, not only IV will affect DV, there are other factors that affect your DV. So you should have also moderator, yeah, variables. Because sometimes your module is very good, but student did not achieve. Eh? So you are wondering what are what happening? Your module is very good, but the student did not achieve. So there must be other factors, eh? other factors like motivation, attitudes and so on. Another concept uh, is intervening variable. Intervening variable is uh, the variable is coming from the IV. Eh? The effect is coming from the IV. Contoh, uh, mediators, moderators, uh, example is gender. Gender is not coming from IV. Eh? Gender is not coming from IV. Contoh, uh, example here. I use this example, uh, which is the module and the module and as your IV and the achievement of the student in that subject. So moderator, one of the moderator is gender. Gender is not an intervening variable because gender is not coming from the IV. Eh? Gender is just a uh, neutral. Yeah. But if you have uh, intervening variables, uh, example is motivation. 
motivation could be come from module. For example, if the module is about games and the student like the games, so he or she is motivated, then the mo mo motivation is called intervening variable because it's coming from the module. It's coming from the IV. <coughs> so that's the difference between moderators and intervening variables. Moderator, moderator variables and intervening variables. Okay. So sometimes they lump sum eh, the moderators and also the intervening variables. But you can differentiate. Gender is not intervening, but motivation is intervening variables. Okay, hopefully you understand what I'm saying today. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, what is the common mistake? Lack of IV, DB in your topic. <clears throat> For example, uh, your IV is just uh, mental health among uh, among uh, from one student. Okay, what's wrong with this uh, this topic? Mental health among Form 1 student. It's only one variable, which is the mental health. I, I'm not sure whether this uh, <coughs> can be accepted for PhD level. Of course, uh, for me, not accepted because only one variable. Of course, uh, we don't know whether mental health is uh, IV or DB because it doesn't say it's about yeah, the, the, the other variable. So this is a very poor topic. If you say mental health among form, it's a very poor topic, yeah? <coughs> and another thing is lack of research work. We don't know how, what kind of research you want to do for your mental health. Is it a correlation? Is it a, you know, survey? Is it a case study? Uh, we don't know because there is no research work in this one. Paham tak ni? Understand? Any question about this one? So make sure you're in your title there are IV and DV in your topic. Even if you are doing qualitative. Eh? Qualitative, maybe you are not using IV, DV, but in your mind, you will say, oh, there must be more than one variable for my PhD level. Okay. This is the uh, same thing. Mental health in Malaysia could be a uh, writing uh, popular magazine. You can write this topic. Okay. All right. Uh, what what wrongs with the topic? Of course, it doesn't have a IV DB. It cannot be a thesis uh, topic because it doesn't uh, really have a research uh, word in here. So you need to to complete your title with IVDB and research work. So these are the research work. Example, development, uh, effect, effectiveness, analysis, relationship, survey of factors that influence exploration, and so on. Okay. So uh, qualitative use, exploration, and something like that. Okay. So here, uh, can you identify IVDB in this uh, topic? Effect of magic math module on primary student achievement in mathematics. So what is the IV? What is the IV here? Magic math. Yeah, this uh, magic math module will be the IV. And uh, student achievement is your DB. In mathematics, your, your DB. So what is the research work? Effect. By uh, looking at effect, you know that the, the research is a uh, experimental res research. Eh? Experimental or quasi-experimental research. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? What is the IV? Factors that affect obstetrician and gynecologist's uh, mental health. So what is the IV here, number two? Factors. Yeah, factors. Oops. Factors is the IV. And what is the DV? Mental health. Yeah, mental health, yeah. Mental health. 
So this way you can uh, have complete title because you have IV, DV and also you put uh, your research uh, words. Okay, here number three, what is the IV? Student self-esteem eh, is the IV. What is your DV? Academic achievement. Uh, what is your research word? Relationship. Relationship. Yeah. These are the research word. So, mesti lengkap lah. Yeah. So, yeah. you have to have a complete a title but not too long. So, do, but don't put your moderator or moderator in the title because it will be too long. Only put IV, DV and also the research word. Research word. So, this one, number four, what is the IV? Children of Vocational Intelligence. The IV, the DV is the their motor competence. Okay, what is the research word? Impact. Eh? This impact is the research word. So, basically, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, this is how we write our title for our research uh, thesis. Okay. Let's go. Uh, this is the one that I explained about population just now. Uh, sampling frame, as we, you know, sampling frame basically meaning that you know the number of your population and you also know the number of your sample based on the uh, sample size table. But if you are using the qualitative, uh, it's not called um, sampling is just called participant or informant eh, if you are using the qualitative research. Informant, participant. All right. Anybody here using uh, qualitative research design? Anybody? All of you using quantitative or qualitative? Some of you use qualitative research design? Yes. Yes, okay. doctor. I have a mixed method, qualitative and quantitative research. Research yeah, that's problem. Cool. That's another problem. <laughs> Mixed method is very very problematic. Yeah. Yes. Because you, you, you because you cannot explain exactly no. because uh, Mixed method is very general. Huh? Very general. We want uh, research design to be very specific. Yeah, very specific. Number two is very big. Yeah? Mixed method meaning that you must know your quantitative uh, design and your qualitative design. But my supervisor says hey, you select a qualitative mixed method, quantitative and quanti qualitative. <laughs> you be problem is I am your examiner because I will ask you, you know, very specific what is your quantitative design, what is qualitative because you will say you mix and I'm not sure whether you can mix those things because the philosophy of those things are very different. Eh? Quantitative uh, quantitative is very control design and qualitative is not control. So, so for me, it's better to use one eh? one method uh, that you are familiar with rather than you have to uh, venture into two methods, that, uh, two paradigm, which is qualitative uh, and quantitative, which you are not. Even me as a professor, I'm not uh, you know qualified to do the mixed method because I don't know about qualitative research design. Okay, so I will explain uh, this one. Perhaps you can, uh, you know, talk to your supervisor. <coughs> the possible answer question during Viva is you have to explain both uh, qualitative and quantitative that design that you use. And the design, qualitative design is not only interview. Interview is not a, a qualitative design. Interview is a instrument that you collect the data. Yes, yes, yeah. doctor. I yeah. have a, I develop an instrument in an indigenous instrument. Yeah, that's instrument. We, uh, we are talking about the design. What is your qualitative design method? What is your qualitative method that you use? Qualitative method, I use a focus group interview. <laughs> that is uh, not, that's a problem. Okay, I will show you the qualitative research method. This is the qualitative research method. You have to answer every. Are you using ethnography? Are you using phenomenology? Are you using heuristic? Are you using simple interaction? This is the qualitative research method that you say that you are using. If you are not using this, you are not, uh, you, you don't know your qualitative research method. Eh? 
because uh, the collective, uh, you know, expert will not accept, you know, focus group as a method. It's just, a, you know, instrument for collecting data. The same thing with, uh, you know, uh, this is the quantitative research method. You have to explain uh, wh which one that you use in your research if you say you are using this method. Is it experimental design? Is it causal comparative design? Is it export de uh, factor design? Is it survey design or correlational design? Uh, so <clears throat> you have to be very familiar with both uh, research methods in quantitative and also qualitative. So for me, it's safe to just you, uh, choose one. If you say you are using uh, qualitative, maybe you say I'm using ethnography, meaning that I'm looking at the cultural, you know, aspect of this research. Uh, and I, I spend time with uh, those people because qualitative is not touch and go. Eh? I have friends who do ethnography here. He spent about um, two years eh, with the orang asli to see their culture, know their language and so on. So these are qualitative research methods. But quantitative, um, some of those uh, <clears throat> like survey design, you can, uh, you know, you can just, just you can just uh, do the one, one shot, eh? meaning that you come and give the instruments. Right, but if you're experimental, you need time huh, to do the experiment and so on. So uh, it's okay. L let me explain uh, other things first. Um, then you decide uh, yourself because uh, usually we want to save the student from the viva because you don't know who will be the examiner. Maybe <laughs> the worst case is one uh, examiner is the you know qualitative uh, expert and the other is quantitative expert and you say you are mixed method. So one will ask you about quantitative research design and the other will ask you about qualitative research design. And it's quite impossible for a student, even professor like me, we are not uh, mastering both, both the design. Okay, <clears throat> and it will take time because quantitative uh, research design is take time. It's not just a touch and go take things that you can do one day interview. This is not qualitative uh, research design. Um, all right, but it can be supported. Eh? Uh, it can be supported by qualitative uh, des uh, design by, you know, very small uh, supportive evidence by using the interview. This is a, it's not really a method, but it is it's just technique of collecting uh, qualitative data. So my student, I say, okay, you have to choose. You want to do qualitative or quantitative? If you want to do qual qualitative, you make sure you use the, the thing that I uh, show you just now, which is the qualitative this, uh, yeah, vision. Uh, this one. Make sure you are familiar with one of these if you are doing a qualitative research design. Okay, but you have to spend a lot of time with the, the with the participant in order to do qualitative research design. Okay. <laughs> but if you think that you want to do a very uh, short, uh, not very long, then you have to choose the um, quantitative uh, research design. Uh, the longest that you go is the experimental designer. Maybe you have to spend about uh, eight weeks, uh, two months, three months, one semester with a student in order to do the experiment. Okay. All right. Uh, before that, let's go back to see this one. Of course, uh, you know, Creswell, many people are influenced by Creswell saying the, the mixed method, which is I question his uh, credibility because uh, you know he that maybe doesn't know the philosophy of the research because it's very difficult to mix anything <clears throat> what he say usually is a sequential uh, sequential meaning that you do the quality first or you do the quantity first and then second you do the quantity it's, it's not about mixing but it's, it's a sequential sequential uh, research design yeah okay let's see this one i have taken uh, Four types of data. This is uh, commonly uh, taught by professors of research design to you because um, we need to know what type of data that we are collecting. Eh? Is it a nominal data, ordinal data, interval data, or 
ratio data. So I hope you know the difference between the four types of data, ordinal, what is ordinal data, what is uh, nominal data, what is uh, um, interval data, and what is ratio data. So is it okay? You understand or you may want me to repeat, uh, to explain to you what type of data that we need? Because this data is important for you to use the statistic. Yeah? Nominal data use different uh, statistic, ordinal data use different statistic, uh, interval data use different statistic, and uh, ratio data also use different statistics. Yeah. And then we have uh, uh, type of uh, statistic that we are going to use the one is we call it parametric statistic and the non-parametric statistics parametric statistic usually is based on the distribution eh? distribution uh, the, if you if you plot the data is a uh, is not normally distributed then you can use the parametric statistic or you can use the test of normality eh? test of normality of the data so you have to know your data before you can choose your uh, analysis tool except for the qualitative uh, qualitative they don't use statistics they use uh, thematic uh, thematic analysis thematics okay statistics also can be divided into two descriptive and inferential so at the phd level if you are doing quantitative research we expect you have to use both eh? in descriptive and inferential statistics not only descriptive inferential could be like t-test anova manova mankova and so on and it will require randomness eh? random selection of the sample of course test of significance is the about the statistical test <coughs> All right, this is about qualitative research design. Uh, you can use thematic analysis, but you need to know whom, who uh, methods of thematic analysis. It could be Miles and Huberman, or it could be Clark and Brown. Uh, so if you have to choose one of them to explain about their methods of thematic analysis. And of course, we have discourse analysis for uh, usually for language or Arts. <clears throat> and the other thing is grounded theory, meaning that you're going to produce a theory at the end of your research eh? in qualitative research methods. Okay, these are stages of research uh, process. You identify the problem, you propose the research topic, you formulate purpose and objective, you build theoretical and conceptual framework, you determine the research design. Uh, this is what I mean. We I want a very specific research design. Eh? So the problem with mixed method is not specific. So you don't know which one, which. Uh, this uh, usually happen uh, during Viva. The, if the students say I'm using uh, mixed method, the first question I ask, what is your quantitative research design? And the second thing, what is your qualitative research design? And I'm not, I don't want to hear that your qualitative research is interview. Is interview is not a research design. Interview is the instrument to collect the qualitative data. It's same thing with a questionnaire. Questionnaire is not a research design. Why questionnaire and interview cannot be a research design? This is my my question posed to you. Why questionnaire if you are doing quant quantitative research design is not a research design questionnaire it's an instrument and also why interview cannot be research design it is instrument the answer is that because questionnaire has been used by all research method most research method will use a questionnaire for quantitative and for qualitative, most of the research design uh, use interview. So interview itself cannot be a research design. So there's a simple explanation why interview and questionnaire cannot be a research design. So if you use a mixed method, don't uh, answer. If an uh, examiner asks you what is your qualitative research design, you say interview. That is wrong. It will not be accepted by the uh, qualitative expert. Eh? 
Okay, determine population and sample. Uh, this is if you are using the quantitative research design. If you are using qualitative, no need for population. You just uh, select your participant or informant. Okay, uh, and then you have instrument pilot study to validate instruments and your data analysis. Oh, right. Can I yes. Ask you? Yeah, sure. In your professional opinion, yes. uh, you know, right, I'm doing a module. Then um, uh, before I'm doing a module, um, is it okay if we just uh, basically uh, uh, without analysis keperluan, we just preferring to uh, LR only to see the gap and then uh, we build up the, the module based on the LR only? Or otherwise, are you recommend to do both? You mean analysis is, is important or not? Or just for AR? Because uh, saya ada baca a few articles that a few model or model, module basically based on LR only. I'm not, I'm not confident. Saya takut nanti Viva yeah, kata. Yeah, <coughs> you have to save yourself. <laughs> you have to save yourself. No? Jadi, anything that you do must have a strong, uh, you know, strong basis. For example, if you want to do module, of course, you have this uh, model of uh, developmental model, meaning that what model that you use for to develop the module. For example, uh, one model is AD model. Yeah? AD model uh, to develop anything, to develop uh, software, to develop module, to develop apps. So the first uh, phase of the AD model is need analysis. So you must do that. You must do that um, in analysis. Need analysis is basically ask the expert uh, if this module is needed in the field. Uh, if you can convince them that this module is good, then uh, I'm sure most of them will say yes. So the analysis the have a certain numbers of um, uh, expertise or not? It means in my field, um, I'm asking all the guru bimbingan counseling, for instance. So cannot, I got it. Cannot, cannot. Guru, 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 guru. Yeah, yeah. We have to know the definition of expert. Eh? Expert is someone who, uh, you know, um, have high level knowledge in that area. So basically, they have okay. PhD. Eh? They have PhD. So oh. guru cannot be. Okay. And it's not cannot be. It's, it can be part, but not it's all. It's a way, eh? is it? Yeah. It's just a, a survey from, from GBK that, that saying that, yeah, we need a module and then plus we all the expertise like psychological, lateral. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's okay. must a big uh, mix, uh, mix uh, in the expert. Uh, expert can be by qualification and by uh, peer recognition. Yeah. Uh, so Guru Paka is a uh, by recognition by their peers, Guru Paka too. Tapi kalau by expert, uh, by qualification, you have to uh, get those with a PhD inside. The, your expert. So, if your expert have seven, seven uh, experts, then maybe five with a PhD or uh, four with PhD and the rest uh, with uh, without PhD. Yeah? So, the majority of the experts should have PhDs in the, in your group, in your expert group. Yeah. So, P, uh, at PhD level, the expert will start with seven. Yeah. For master's level, five is okay. Yeah five experts. So PhD, we need more. So I asked my student uh, for PhD, you must have at least seven uh, experts. Yeah. And the expert must be odd number. Don't say I have four, I have six, I have ten. Why is it uh, important the experts should be odd number? Start with five, seven, nine, eleven. Tell me. Anybody can tell me why it's not odd number, not uh, even number? So, kalau uh, seven, it means ada, ada lebih max. Yeah, uh, dia kena ada uh, tu, simple majority. Eh? Yes. Uh, yeah. okay. Kalau you ada module, you bagi pada empat saja, uh, expert, dua kata okay, dua kata tak okay, you tak ada keputusan. Lah. Dua orang expert kata okay, you punya module okay, dua kata not okay lah. Hmm, so, tak ada keputusan. Dia mesti ada simple majority. Katakan tiga dengan dua. Tiga kata okey, dua kata tak okey. Jadi, still okey sebab tiga kata okey. Eh. 
Ini kadang tengok, eh kenapa expert dia empat orang? Why your supervisor didn't tell you the expert must be even number? Alright, okay. Okay, so okay. even number. Thank you so much. Tuan. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this goal of uh, research to be descriptive is it could be description could be prediction could be cause and effect so you we know already description usually uh, what what type of uh, research we uh, with the goal of description uh, survey method or case yeah. study case study will be uh, those uh, uh, just description prediction you can have a uh, correlation you have uh, regression you have a uh, modeling this uh, prediction uh, type of uh, research. Of course, cost, cost is, uh, is experimental design or quasi-experimental and so on. So from this goal, we know what type of research design that is appropriate for them. Yeah? All right. <coughs> It is a, as I say, quantitative research method. Uh, if you are using quantitative research method, this is one of the thing. Yeah? Uh, basically, that you will use in your research design. But if you are doing qualitative research design, then these are the methods that is recognized by the qualitative scholars. These are the type of res uh, qualitative research design. But there are special uh, category of research method, which uh, case study, action research, evolution study, model development, software development, this model, model development, uh, policy study, okay. One is module development is also a uh, uh, research method if you are not doing the Effects. Eh? Ini yang saya kata tadi yang pembinaan apa? Usability saja. If you are only use usability of the module, then you your research design is module development. You develop only a module without uh, testing the effect. Eh? If you are testing the effect, then it can be become the quasi experiment design, quasi experimental design. Kalau you uh, do the effect, eh? effect of this module. Tapi kalau bangun saja dan hanya uji uh, usability, dia akan jadi research design you ialah module development saja. Faham ya? Eh? <coughs> so, all of these three doesn't have interview, doesn't have questionnaire. Itu semua bukan research design. Banyak kali saya dah beritahu kan? Ini kadang-kadang tanya research design, oh questionnaire, research, research design, interview, this is not research design. Eh? I repeated many many times uh, dalam tapi dalam viva masih lagi kata what is your design oh questionnaire I use a questionnaire that is instrument that is not research design I'm using interview interview is not research design yeah so be complicated sikit lah uh, kalau tanya qualitative ah uh, ni jawab ni ethnography ke phenomenology ke heuristic ke nama pun canggih ya eh? <coughs> okay kalau you rasa you lebih apa ni um you nak buat yang ini, so you say lah, this is a case study, actual research or model development, model development, software development, policy development and so on. Ini if you are developing anything, eh? if you are developing module, uh, developing software, you are developing um, ABM, yeah, you you can use DDR, you can use AD, you can use Hennepin Impact, you have, can you dig and carry a sure model, Patrick model, SDLC model, Cam Garlic and Ellie model. Okay, this uh, if you have uh, something that you develop. If you don't have anything, then it can be survey method. Yeah, survey method uh, doesn't need any uh, model or module. Uh, just perception saja. If you are doing a uh, development uh, evaluation model, these are the evolution uh, model that you can use, CIPP. Context, input, product, process, logic model, cryptic four level model. These are for evaluation. But if, if you want to evaluate program, uh, make sure it's more than three years. Eh? Don't evaluate a program which is just beginning. Eh? For example, the program is just beginning six months. Uh, it's not possible for you to evaluate the program. 
you make sure the program stabilized first before you can evaluate yeah about three years before you can make evaluation for that program okay this is what i call instrument uh, test questionnaire interview protocol observation checklist content analysis portfolio these are instruments okay ini alat kajian eh? Uh, jangan beritahu saya apa research design question eh uh, itu saya tak mau dengar okay if i say what is your research design jawab yang tadi lah ya yeah. jangan jawab ni kalau saya kata instrument what is instrument okay i'm using question eh i'm using uh, test i'm using but as i say just now must have three eh any three or more than three minimum three test question eh interview protocol question eh interview observation can be ya yeah. We cannot depend on only one or two instruments in your research. Kalau nak selamatlah dalam Viva, jangan guna satu instrument atau dua instrument saja. The more, the better. More instrument you use, the better because you are going to triangulate. triangulate. Okay, instrument, the other, uh, you have to do the psychometric uh, analysis, meaning that the validity and reliability Validity ada berapa jenis? Ada four types. What are those type? Validity types. What is the purpose of validity? Ini dalam bahasa Melayu apa? Kesahan kan? Kesahan ni apa tujuan dia? The purpose of validity to see whether the instrument measures what it says it will measure. Huh? Maknanya instrument tu mengukur apa yang dia kata atau ia design untuk mengukur. Meaning that if it's a mathematics uh, test, it should measure mathematics ability or mathematics uh, knowledge. Okay. So four types of uh, validity is what? Face. Okay. Content. Okay. Construct. Okay. Saya tanya dan saya jawab. Criteria. These are four type of uh, yang you belajar lah dalam uh, GRU kan. Dalam research method you ajar, uh, diajar ni validity apa jenis dia validity, feasibility apa dia, content validity apa dia, concept validity apa, criteria validity. Criteria pun ada dua iaitu concurrent and and predictive. Kan ini semua kena tahulah eh. Apa jenis uh, you punya instrument tu ada validity yang mana satu? Is it content? Is it construct? Is it criteria? And then we are going to ask you what type of uh, reliability that you use for your instrument. Reliability means what? Reliability means that the consist consist consistency of your instrument. Ya? Or, uh, instrument tu tekal ataupun uh, dia reliable. Maknanya every time you use the instrument, you get the same uh, same result. Eh? Itu bawa reliable. Tapi validity ini menunjukkan bahawa dia mengukur apa yang dia bina untuk diukur. Eh. Okay, reliability pun ada berapa jenis? Ada empat jenis iaitu apa? Dah belajar kan ni dalam uh, GRU kan? Kalau you student UFC uh, dalam research method dah ajar ni. Tapi ya, cuba beritahu saya apa dia type of reliability ni. Ke tak ajar? Dia tak tahu ni. Kadang sampai peringkat PhD kita tanya dalam Viva pun tak tahu. Itu belum lagi. Yang corporate apple tu dipanggil internal consistency kan? <coughs> corporate apple tu dia punya statistik dia tapi dia punya reliability kita panggil internal consistency menggunakan statistik iaitu Kronbach Kronbach Alpha ok reliability ni yang pertama sekali test retest kan tak ajar ke ni tak belajar ke belajar ni ini benda-benda kindergarten dan dalam research method ni kalau you tak tahu uh, saya tak tahulah macam mana you nak hadapi you punya research ya test research uh, equivalence uh, split half 
Okey. Ini empat jenis, empat jenis reliability tapi yang sekarang ni yang banyak digunakan ialah yang akhir sekali lah internal consistency sebab kita tak mau buat banyak sangat test. Kita buat satu test saja kita boleh dapat dia punya reliability iaitu kita guna uh, method dipanggil internal consistency iaitu menggunakan statistik Kronbach, oh, Kronbach Alpha. Alright. Ini dia panggil psychometric lah. Psychometric ni you kena tahu tapi yang face ni sebenarnya hanya untuk ni lah untuk kosmetik saja. Maknanya kita kena ada instrumen yang look professional lah. Uh, tapi tak boleh kata oh validity of my instrument is just face. Tak boleh eh. Face uh, salah satulah tapi dia tak boleh stand alone lah. Maknanya you cannot say that validity of my uh, instrument is just face validity tak boleh you kata face ada you kata uh, face and content or face and construct or face and criteria okay usually content validity is for test kalau kita bina test kan ujian mesti ada content tapi kalau kita guna questionnaire mesti ada construct lah. construct validity uh, we are using uh, if you are using uh, questionnaire then the validity will be construct validity kalau you gunakan test the punya validity is content validity right uh, yang ni saya rasa you dah belajar masa research method dulu and then yes yeah Bro, saya ada baca CFA, CEA tapi tak faham-faham lah bro. <laughs> <laughs> Lepas tu memang saya gunakan untuk content validity ni memang kita gunakan rasa uh, untuk dia punya ni. Betul ke bro? Saya memang baca tapi saya tak faham. <laughs> you kena, kena cari buku lah. Buku baca tak faham juga. Kena cari guru, guru, guru. <laughs> Tak apa, ini basic saja eh, basic saja yang uh, nanti kalau you pergi advanced statistic you boleh buat TFA uh, experimental uh, fact, itu fact analysis lah kan, fact analysis Yes And buat EFA dulu, lepas tu buat CFA confirmative uh, fact analysis itu kalau you punya tajuk factor eh, factor maknanya nak tengok factor mana yang mengaruhi DV you Okay, kalau you tajuk you start dengan factor maknanya kena buat tu lah EFA kena buat, uh, CFA kena buat ya yeah? Sebab kadang-kadang, kadang-kadang faktor tu why we need to do CFA, EFA sebab kadang-kadang faktor tu dia dalam satu kluster yang sama. Ha, kita dalam research kita tak, kita tak mau benda yang kita nak independent eh. Satu faktor tu mesti independent dengan faktor yang lain. Jadi the only way kita nak tahu dia tu independent ataupun dia dependent atau di dalam kluster yang sama kita menggunakan EFA dan juga CFA lah. Ha, itu dia. Rasional oh, dia, okay. rasional okay. dia. Ya, yeah. kalau tidak mungkin you kata oh saya ada sembilan apa faktor. Sebenarnya you bukan ada sembilan, you ada lima je. Yang lain tu semua dia boleh masuk uh, faktor yang sama. Ya, yeah? di dalam faktor yang sama atau kluster yang sama. Uh, jadi itu yang kita nak tahu. Sebab kita tak tahu faktor uh, yang sembilan tu mesti totally independent daripada satu dengan lain. Jadi kalau tak ada faktor dalam tajuk kajian tak perlulah pro ya? Tak perlulah apa yang you susah-susah uh, susah buat apa, apa hal you nak buat benda-benda tu. Semua pakat buat pro dalam kelas. <laughs> sebab you ikut orang lain buat, orang lain buat, orang lain you tak tahu rasional sebab apa kena buat benda tu. Okey <laughs> betul-betul faham. <laughs> Okey itu dia thank you. You dah faham ya. Eh? Already. Lepas tu uh, ni objektif instrumen maknanya yang macam tadi lah uh, objektif instrumen test kan objektif, objektif maknanya dia tidak melibatkan opinion eh uh, yang ni yang kita nak ni supaya kalau kita buat eksperimen tu kita nak yang objektif instrumen lah ya pre-test post-test kan sebab questionnaire ni dia problem eh what is the difference between test and questionnaire questionnaire lah kita ada apa lagi essay question kan dan sebagainya lah ya. Yeah. Objektif, uh, what is the difference between test dengan questionnaire ni? Sebab ramai yang confuse. Orang kata apa yang semua pakai? Dia kata questionnaire. Sebenarnya sepatutnya dia pakai test. Test is to measure apa? Test is to measure 
knowledge and skill uh, test if you want to measure knowledge and skill maknanya you have to use test I cannot use questionnaire boleh ke you nak measure dia punya pengetahuan tu dengan questionnaire saja tak boleh kan why why questionnaire cannot be testing your knowledge sila jawab siapa boleh jawab why questionnaire cannot be used to test knowledge or skill skill why kenapa because test is apply another person because questionnaire is just opinion you want to measure their opinion not their knowledge yeah and questionnaire doesn't have a true or false answer right or wrong answer questionnaire doesn't have right or wrong answer eh? uh, only test has right and wrong answer that's why you cannot use uh, questionnaire in your monthly test can can you use monthly test to use questionnaire cannot so in order to measure their knowledge and skill you have to use test because it's more object objective yeah it doesn't involve opinion because it has a one right answer and wrong answer okay so in experimental design we need a objective instrument like test beside this instrument lah. but the effect or the dv cannot be motivation eh? because uh, you are not teaching motivation in your module no? some people say oh want, i want to uh, de de determine the effects of this module on student achievement and motivation is wrong why, why is wrong okay let's see the the topic of the thesis is uh, effects of mod module A on student achievement and motivation. Is it right or wrong? It's wrong because the module only uh, designed to determine the achievement of the student, not the motivation. Because you are not teaching uh, motivation in the module. You are teaching the subject matters in the module. For example, you are teaching mathematics, you are teaching science, you are teaching STEM in your module you are not teaching motivation. So you cannot see the effects of this module on motivation. Motivation is just you uh, use another instrument which is questionnaire to uh, see their perception regarding the module only. Okay, understand? Yes. Yes. So don't put motivation in, uh, if you are using experiment, don't use motivation in your title. Motivation can be the moderator variable. Eh? Okay, finally, sekarang pukul berapa dah? Sepuluh, ada lagi sejam. Tak apa, kita just uh, uh, review sikit-sikit saja. Okay, common mistake. This is usually during the uh, viva or during the proposal defense. Uh, common mistake, give stupid answer. What is this uh, stupid answer? One, you didn't answer the question. <laughs> you go Kedua around the bush. Kedua kawan saya buat. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yang paling stupid sekali. Ah, uh, ini, ini kenapa buat arca ni? Ah, uh, supervisor saya so buat. Itu uh, tak boleh. Eh? So take your own responsibility. Don't blame your supervisor. Uh, even though itulah, mungkin itu cadangan supervisor, tapi janganlah uh, bagi beritahu ya dalam viva tu. Okay, kalau dia tak ada kenapa tak buat ini, tak buat itu, ha, you kata apa? Kenapa tak ikut prosedur buat research ni? Ha, jangan jawab apa? Don't answer, I don't have money, I don't have time. Yang itu tak boleh, no, no. Ah. Jangan jawab, saya tak ada duit, saya tak ada masa. Because that is not, that is not the problem. That is not the consideration, eh? by the examiner. We assume you will do the things properly. Dia kata senang ya, kalau tak ada duit tak payah belajar lah, tak payah buat research. 
So the answer should be uh, maybe ada apa? Uh, kekangan ke kan contohnya masa PKP ke masa uh, COVID uh, you you cannot go you know to the school and so on. That is acceptable but don't say I don't have money, I don't have time. Because the examiner will say we don't have time to give you PhD eh. Dia boleh jawab juga lah. Okay tajuk basi yang ini white swan meaning that your topic is uh, have been uh, researched by many people so many people have done your the research topic uh, similar you just change the population or you just change the sample uh, but the topic is quite similar with other people this is we call uh, white swan topic I, in re research we want a black swan black swan which is a rare topic is rare uh, not many people has done the topic. Okay, number three, topic does not have IVDV. Uh, ini, uh, I tell you again, uh, make sure in your research you have more than one variable that you study. Yeah. So you have put the two variables, the two main variables in your topic. And also the research, uh, research word, eh? research word to reflect the research method that you are going to use. Okay, lack of conceptual framework, lack of theoretical framework, you don't know. Even uh, in one viva, I asked uh, this uh, candidate about the theory, what are the theories they use, and she said, uh, even she asked me back, she said, do we need a theory in a research? <laughs> this is a PhD level. Huh? So make sure you, this is uh, given to you, so you have to have theory and models in your theoretical framework. Prof, yeah. Uh, this is one of my biggest concern because conceptual framework and theoretical framework, yes. ada a few journals and article recommended combined together. Prof, ada contoh tak? Prof yang kita boleh buat the first uh, references for conceptual framework and theoretical and then other scholars saying that theoretical framework kita letak dalam chapter 2 and the conceptual dekat chapter 1. So which one better Prof? Yeah better. I need the, uh, the, the contoh. <laughs> for me it's your choice. You can you uh, put both or you can uh, if you want to use choose one uh, in chapter one you use a conceptual framework because you can integrate theoretical framework in the conceptual framework yeah? the most important is conceptual framework because it will show the relationship between the variables and where the variables come from is the from the theoretical framework okay uh, you can also use theoretical uh, put theoretical framework in uh, chapter two if you want so for my student of uh, chapter one, uh, the compulsory is a uh, conceptual framework. Uh, of course, in conceptual framework, you you have to tell me also about the theory that you use. Okay, so you combine conceptual, theoretical, but you use the word conceptual framework. Okay, of course, in chapter two, you have to uh, elaborate on your theoretical framework. It can be done. It can be put uh, as a as a topic eh, in your chapter two. two. Okay. I will show you example, let's see, okay, this one. This example of conce uh, conceptual framework, uh, your independent is the new uh, module, uh, but the theory can be put uh, at the, down here, what a theory that is support your module, uh, so it's combined with the theoretical and conceptual framework. So these are dependent variable and these are the moderator variable. Yeah? So this is uh, one of the example how you draw the conceptual framework for your uh, thesis. Of course uh, the element here come from literature, come from theory and so on. Yeah. Right. Then this is uh, for qualitative research, uh, conceptual framework for the qualitative uh, research design. So it doesn't have IVDV, but uh, they use a, a construct, huh? construct, the main construct here and the sub construct here. So these are uh, ways of writing your conceptual framework for qualitative research design. All right. Uh, 
Okay, this common mistake, do not know your IVDV moderator, do not know how to state and test your null hypothesis. Okay, <coughs> null hypothesis uh, is or are used when we use inferential statistics. Eh? That's a simple indicator. If you use inferential statistics like TTS, ANOVA, MANOVA, MANCOVA, then you have to have a null hypothesis. But you, if you do not if you don't use uh, inferential statistics, then you don't need a null hypothesis. Eh? For example, you just uh, use descri descriptive statistics only, so no need to use null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is when you want to know there's a significant difference or the significant relationship between the variables. Okay, there's a uh, HO is a null hypothesis, there is no significant difference, and uh, H1 is the alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference. Eh? The hand Alternative hypothesis is the same as your theory. Okay. But when we use a statistical test, then we need to put our uh, hypothesis in the form of null, eh? null hypothesis. Because this is the only one that we test with our data, the, the null hypothesis. Okay, next. This is a lack of sampling frame. Uh, as I say, you don't know your population, you don't know your uh, how many of the how many in the population and so on. Confused between research method and development model. Okay, research method as I show you experimental, quasi or survey method, or correlational method, or modeling method, or ethnography or in quantitative ethnography methodology and so on. Development model is the AD, DDR, and so on, eh? development model. So you don't confuse between the two. If you are using uh, only survey method, then you don't have the development model. Eh? You only use survey method. And most of the people, even though they are using different uh, instrument, three instrument, but they do not know, uh, do the triangulation. So you have to do the triangulation, meaning that you have to state the data set from the instrument one, data set from instrument two, data set uh, instrument three, and then you discuss about what are the uh, are the data set supporting each other or there are differences among the data sets. This we call triangulation. Eh? Triangulation must be done in chapter in chapter four. Yeah data when you state your data you have to also discuss uh, chapter four uh, and five yes but if you have development uh, for example you have development you develop module and so on you have to have six six chapters and eh? not five because one chapter is uh, on development okay Kalau membina modul dan sebagainya, you can ada chapter yang satu chapter lagi khusus untuk pembangunan mod, model atau modul tu. Atau, pro? Ya. Yeah. Kalau SB cadangkan lima je, macam mana pro? Walaupun you ada modul. Haa. Uh -uh. hmm, nanti examiner akan cadangkan you enam. <laughs> Okey. So, you, uh, chapter lagi. You buat enam supaya memang secara uh, tradisinya okay. kita akan cadang kalau saya examiner, saya akan cadang sebab you buat mod, modul. So, you need one chapter to describe about your, your modul lah. Yang pro, pro tak? Pro, tadi saya tengok Eddie, DDR, uh, Kirk Patrick kan? Yang ni uh. memang saya semua baca. Uh, pro, how about CDIC, Pro? Are you okay with CDIC or dia macam... Uh. Oh, ambil yang original lah, CD ni diambil daripada orang lain juga kan Ambil yang oh. Ambil, sebab the problem is If you publish kan, if you publish Those, those uh, authors in western country don't know CD, who is CD They know uh, Eddie, they know DDR but they don't know CD <laughs> That's the problem Because the main issues when I referring all the modules punya thesis Dekat UPSI or other university I think kebanyakan yang baca memang sekarang ni dia baru macam popular sikit AD and DDR hmm. But for sure ramai yang I think past five years uh, memang pakai CD because yeah. of the level So I, uh, saya cuma nak tanya uh, are they okay untuk Viva nanti ataupun kena belasah juga Kena belasah <laughs> sebab CD ni dia weird sikit lah Dia kata modul pun kena validate mana boleh Well kena ada reliability Yes, definitely. 
Ah, uh, mana ada uh, modul cannot uh, should, should not be uh, tak boleh kita buat reliability on module sebab uh, module ni dia bukan instrumen tau. Module ni is not instrumen. Dia cuma boleh di validate saja. Tak perlu ada reliability on the module. Oh, so mereka boleh... tak perlu lagi kaji rintis, is it? Module tak perlu sebab oh. you perlu hanya expert saja tengok module you. Tak perlulah. Kalau tidak you akan wasting your time sebab itu 8 minggu tu takkan you nak rintis 8 minggu you punya module kan. Yang yeah. keduanya mod, dia reliability ni consistency kan. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah, macam, yes. macam mana you dapat consistency of module sedangkan you punya set induksi pun akan berlainan kalau you different teacher will you set different set induksi and so on. And different samples and then, well. And right? siapa yang akan tu, siapa yang akan read your punya module tu kan? Dia dia mesti kalau uh, instrument yang jawab tu student kan? Ha, modul yeah. siapa yang kena jawab? Student. Nak jawab macam mana dengan modul ni? Autopilot dah. Kita kan? untuk reliability dia kena data data uh, exam ke apa kan. Macam instrument uh -huh. you jawab baru kita boleh uh, determine your reliability from your answer. Uh -huh. So macam mana you nak uh, buat untuk untuk modul. Modul ni bukan instrumen jadi tak ada you uh, apa nak jawab setuju ke tak setuju nak jawab betul ke tak betul kan. Hmm. Jadi pelik lah sidik ni bagi saya tak payah guna lah sebab dia suggest sesuatu yang kita orang education memang against lah. Uh, we, we do not uh, do uh, reliability on module lah. Saya pun tak tahu mana dia belajar lah kan. <laughs> saya 13 tahun di Amerika tak pernah ada profesor saya suruh saya buat reliability on the module because they say module is not uh, an instrument. Reliability only for instrument eh, for uh, alat kajian contohnya test ke questionnaire ke dan sebagainya so better for you use uh, someone else lah yang tu yang well known uh, in western world supaya kalau nak hantar you punya you punya apa artikel ke Q1, Q2 di mana journal tu di Amerika ke di negara-negara lain dia tak kenal pun sidik ni sorry lah to say sorry to say but I'm suggesting you use AD atau DDR. Okay. Alright. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much. Lagi? Yang ini yang saya kata ni, kalau boleh tak elakkan daripada mixed method ni sebab dia very general. So you need to be specific apa benda yang you nak buat. Kadang-kadang nak buat survey pun boleh guna mixed method juga kan. Yang ini yang problem ni. Dia buat survey tapi guna mixed method. Dia buat apa? Pembangunan modul pun nak guna mixed method kan. Sedangkan dia tiap-tiap satu tu dia ada perbezaan dia survey lain uh, apa ni uh, quasi experiment tu lain yeah. and then you are impossible for you to master both uh, methods eh? both qualitative and uh, quantitative methods jadi sometimes when you use mid method ni you unnecessarily yeah? invite a question from the examiner yang dia akan tanya you your knowledge tentang quantitative kualitatif. Dia tanya you knowledge tentang kualitatif research kan. Sebab you kata you boleh apa guna dua-dua method ni. So for me my advice is just choose one main method and supporting. Supporting tak apa. Mana supporting you nak kata tak you don't mention the about the research design pun tak apa sebab dia very small. Eh? You want to support by interview data. Tak apa. No problem. Kan. The main research is a uh, a quasi experiment but it was supported by uh, you know interview data uh, we, we interview the teachers and the student nah, itu saja you boleh tell that but if you use you use mixed method we are going to because these are 50 50 percent eh? quantitative 50 percent qualitative 50 percent they are bulk so they need a specific research method for each one nah, jadi itulah dia punya tu So the question is how you going to discuss with your supervisor? <laughs> My advice is you say to your supervisor that, that you are not. Yeah? I'm not mastering both methods. Huh? So can I just do one method that I, I'm uh, familiar, I'm uh, comfortable with? Because I don't want in the uh, viva I be asked about this qualitative method, this quantitative method which I cannot answer because I'm not Yeah, 
mastering both methods. Itu kalau boleh slow talk with your supervisor lah ya. Sebab ramai supervisor ni dia ingat uh, pakai mix method ni is very easy kan. Just questionnaire saja. It's not. Uh, it's not. It will be deeper. They will ask you deeper because we don't know who are your uh, examiner. Kalau examiner tu orang purely qualitative, dia akan tak terima lah mix method. Orang yang uh, kalau examiner tu purely uh, qualitative, tak akan terima mix method. Orang tu uh, purely quantitative pun dia tak, tak akan terima lah mix method ni. Jadi mix method ni mesti ada orang special yang memang dia guna masa dia punya PhD. Itu pun very, I'm not sure lah kalau dia is around eh. Okay. Ada soalan ni. Nak, macam mana nak convince your supervisor ni kalau kata saya tak nak guna mix method ni. It's just to save yourself eh, during the viva. Sebab kita tak tahu siapa examiner dia. Kalau examinernya orang purely qualitative, dia takkan kata lah interview tu a research method kan. Alright. Agak menakutkan nak lawan SB Prof. <laughs> Tak ada, you boleh convince dia. Kata Profesor Ramli, you sebut nama saya je. Kata <laughs> Profesor Ramli did not uh, advise lah sebab he has, he has been a lot of, in a lot of uh, viva. And siapa yang buat means method memang kena belasah lah dalam viva ni. Sebab saya akan tanya detail apa you punya methods dia, apa you punya quantitative method, method qualitative method, method, bagaimana you mix dia. Ha, itu satu lagi question tu. How you mix them? Can you mix them? Then the question. Sebenarnya tak mix pun, dia just sequential maknanya dia buat quality dulu lepas tu buat quantity, itu bukan mix kan? <coughs> Because I'm a chemistry dulu, saya uh, was a chemistry teacher kalau mix ni maknanya you mix the chemical lah one chemical mix another chemical, you will produce another chemical which is different from the two eh? <coughs> Okay, ini disadvantage of uh, using questionnaire Uh, common mistake lagi hantar TC yang tidak disemak betul-betul kepada pemeriksa a lot of uh, spelling error incomplete sentences hanging uh, jumping jack this is the flights of ideas missing citation references these are the common mistakes made by the students so make sure before you send your final draft of your thesis to the examiner, make sure you have done this uh, uh, proof, huh? reading proof, proof reading. Uh, how to avoid the flights of ideas? Incomplete sentences, maknanya tiap-tiap sentences dia mesti ada SOV, eh? SVO, eh? subject verb. Okay, for to have a complete sentence, you have a SVO, subject verb objects. Huh? Tadi saya beritahu macam mana yang tadi ya, huh? yang jump, jumping jack ni. Flat whole idea. You punya paragraph, every paragraph tu dia melompat-lompat eh. Idea uh, paragraph satu cerita pasal lain, uh, paragraph dua cerita pasal lain dan sebagainya. Ini satu cara untuk kita ada, we have a smooth transition is the last word. Huh? The last word of the first paragraph will introduce the second paragraf. Jadi ayat yang akhir untuk paragraf uh, pertama tu telah pun uh, indicate apa yang you akan cakap tentang uh, the next paragraph tu. Jadi itu cara satu cara untuk kita apa transisi ya, eh, transisi yang lebih baiklah di antara paragraf. Kalau tidak dia akan jadi jumping lah ni. Sekejap kita tentang lain, sekejap tentang kita lain ya. Okey. <coughs> Jadi transisi antara paragraph, ini no transition, all references, ah, yang ni pun mesti to avoid being accused of plagiarism, every paragraph must have at least one reference. Ah. Setiap paragraph mesti ada sesekurangnya satu reference, tapi kalau ada reference yang lama, mesti tambah dengan reference yang barulah ya. Supaya tak nampak you punya reference semua lama kan. Uh, ayat berbelit-belit, go around the bush, yang ini kena Uh, kena sharpen your sentences, your writing uh, repetition ya, ini pun problem eh kadang-kadang biasanya dalam bab apa, bab empat kan dia nak report the results dia kata table one, uh, paragraph one start dengan table one 
bla bla bla. Lepas tu paragraph tu table 2. <laughs> paragraph 3 table 3. Jadi itu repetition yang akan memboringkan pembaca lah eh. Jadi you kena ubah. Yang ni claim without evidence maknanya you just claim without any reference lah eh. Jadi macam tadi lah eh, yang siapa kata tadi. Tidak ada lagi kajian lah. Mana rujukannya mengatakan tak ada kajian kan. Uh, you dah search ke semua-semua library mengatakan tak ada kajian kan. Jadi lebih selamat kata kurang lah. Kurang kajian daripada kata tidak ada kajian. Ha. Kurang kajian dia jalankan. Kalau tidak dia akan kata mana you tahu tak ada kajian. Ah uh, Yang ni satu lagi ni. Yang tahap-tahap ni kan. Bila buat menggunakan soal sidik tidak ada tahap lah iaitu persepsi saja kan jadi persepsi ni dia tak ada tahap sebab persepsi tak boleh kata saya ada tahap tinggi ya eh. persepsi saya terhadap sesuatu tu tahap tinggi mana ada orang tak cakap macam tu kan persepsi ni sama ada you setuju tak setuju lah based on your skala tu uh, we use back our instrument if the instrument says uh, strongly agree agree uh, uncertain not agree and strongly not agree so use that one as your apa ni ayat yang you gunakan lah jangan kepakai tahap sebab dalam skala tu tak ada tahap ya the only one you can use tahap is the test lah kalau dia test dapat uh, markah if you give the test and the student get 100% 100% uh, over 100 you say that he has a very high level of achievement tapi uh, Kebanyakannya orang buat questionnaire pun nak letak tahap juga. Tak perlu. Jangan tukar eh. Jangan tukar. Don't change the scale of your instrument. If your instrument say agree, disagree, don't change to high, middle, low. It's not appropriate because you didn't ask them about high level, middle level or low level. You ask them whether they agree or disagree with the statement. So that's the one that you are going to use. Agree, disagree or uncertain. Itu saja yang you boleh beritahu. Jangan kata dia tinggi rendah eh? sebab dalam instrumen tu tak ada tanya dia, mereka pun pasal tinggi rendah. Sebab dia problem di sini. Di sini eh. You see here the this one. Dia uh, use 1 to 5 punya skala. 1 is uh, strongly disagree. 2 is disagree. 3 is neutral. 4 is agree. And 5 is strongly agree. Tiba-tiba dia tukar yang ini kan. Dia tukar jadi low, average, moderate. A high, mo moderate dengan low. The problem is uh, here in the middle. Eh. Kalau dia dapat uh, mean 2.3 sedangkan dalam in the original original scale 2.34 is uh, uncertain eh? 2.34 is uncertain tapi bila dia tukar kat sini dia jadi moderate adakah uh, orang yang mengatakan tidak pasti tu sama dengan dia punya tahap moderate tak sama kan saya tak pasti kenapa you kata saya moderate pula i I, I jawab tak pasti. Saya tak pasti tentang statement ni. Tiba-tiba you beritahu, uh, you state the result as a moderate ataupun sederhana saja tahap dia. Takkan sederhana. Saya tak pasti pun. Jadi tak boleh eh. This is wrong. Jangan ubah. Walaupun Jamil ni kawan saya. <laughs> Tapi don't use this one. Unless you are using the uh, test. Uh. Ujian tak apa. Kita boleh pakai ni. Tapi kalau setakat soal sidik tak perlu pakai ni. Sebab this is the wrong interpretation of the uh, student uh, ataupun respondent punya respond. Faham tak ni? Saya tengok banyak orang buat apa ni ikut yang uh, apa TCC yang tak guna tu. Yang lepas-lepas tu yang tak betul. So jangan kita ubah eh. Jangan kita ubah respondent uh, respondent. Respondent dia jawab dia setuju tak setuju guna setuju tak setuju. Jangan guna tinggi rendah eh. Sebab itu bukan yang dia jawab. Dia tak jawab dia tinggi ke rendah kan. Dia jawab dia setuju atau tak setuju dengan statement yang you tanya tu. Itu saja. Common mistake lagi ialah uh, short sendiri. Ini uh, emotional punya writing lah. Ini maknanya I know everything, whatever. Uh, guna absolute contohnya all, many, none, perfect, superb. Ini semua Uh, wrong eh. Kalau kita kena absolute biasanya salah. Kalau kita semua orang macam ni kan. Mana-mana betul semua orang macam ni. Ataupun 
tidak ada langsung orang macam ni kan uh. and then emotional writing uh, contohnya I like this uh, model very much itu semua emotional writing ya. kita sebagai we as a researcher scientist we cannot do that. okay emotional writing saya tidak suka model ID uh. sebab tu tak, tak guna model ID tak suka model ID ya. tak boleh ya we cannot use that statement. Saya sangat teruja dengan kajian PJX. Saya jatuh cinta dengan model DDR. Ini semua emotional writing cannot be in your academic writing. Saya orang pertama menjumpai dapatan ini. Ha, ini pun tak boleh. I'm the first one who find this. Oh, none of this, uh, none of the previous researchers have done about this topic. So, akhir sekali my study proof pun tak boleh. Kita dah beritahu kan, don't use uh, proof or membuktikan, tak boleh. Poor writing, lack of cohesiveness and coherence. Ha, ini pun sama. Bila penulisan kita tu tak kohesif atau tak koheren, maknanya dia akan effect the perception of the examiner on your thesis lah. Okay, so the question why did you choose this topic? Ini biasanya soalan-soalan yang akan timbul lah dalam viva kan. Kenapa pilih topik ni, tak pilih topik lain? What is the critical problem? Apa masalah yang kritikal menyebabkan you nak buat kajian ni? So all this must have answers from you. Uh, reasonable answers that can be accepted by the examiner. What is your sampling frame? Uh, bila saya tanya what sampling frame, you automatically akan kata populasi dia berapa, dia punya sample berapa. Why did you choose this research method, not the other research method? Uh, ni pun sama lah. You have to have the justification. Okay, what is the main contribution of your research? You have to give, uh, tell the examiner what is the main thing, what is the novelty of your research. Okay, apa yang lain daripada orang lain, yeah. What is the novelty, apa yang baharu. What are the, what are the theoretical implications? This is uh, what your finding can improve the, theory, uh, the present theory. What are the implication, uh, practical implication is uh, what is the contribution of findings, uh, for example, like you can develop a new curriculum, new action plan, new uh, policies and so on. Okay, what is your justification? Uh, you need justification, justify, justify, justify. Everything that you do must be justified, yeah? A lot of justification. Why you did not do this? Jadi kadang ada tanya kenapa tak ikut prosedur dan sebagainya, you kena jawab apa? Usually you have to say that uh, limitation, uh, you have this limitation. That limitation must be uh, reasonable lah, uh, it's not personal limitation. Bukan kata tak ada duit, tak ada masa. Tapi limitation based on the things that you cannot control. For example, PKP and so on. Alright, sekarang tak ada PKP jadi tak boleh ada, tak ada justifikasi PKP lah. Uh. So what is novelty of your findings? Uh, jangan buat long silent ni tak jawab eh i'm not sure some sometimes you see the students uh, <coughs> keep silent even though the examiner asked many questions didn't ask the question the answer didn't answer the question sometimes uh, i have experience that the student cry uh, maybe emotionally disturbed Usually they crying because they cannot answer the question eh, by the examiner. And thirdly, blame your supervisor. Please avoid blaming your supervisor. Eh. You take the blame yourself. Uh, flip your thesis pages. Ha, ni pun satu hal lagi. Kan dalam Viva, janganlah flip-flip ni. You kena put apa untuk forget uh, to, to avoid flipping. What should you do? Hello. Yeah, put the tag. Yeah, you put the tag. Eh? Mana untuk methodology kat sini tag dia. Untuk uh, apa problem statement, this tag. Untuk uh, dapatan, this tag. So that you are not finding, you, you know, you flipping your thesis rigorously in front of the examiner. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we want to show the evidence, right? Yeah. Is it the... Uh, Rational tak kalau we bring all the videos or all the uh, uh, manuscript or something as a documentation? Yeah, you, you have to bring, like module have to bring, kalau dia ada module kan. 
Because jadi, sometimes jadi the examiner want to see The examiner ha, want to see Then you you have to show Kalau dia tak tanya tak payah tunjuk lah Tapi kalau dia tanya Minat uh, minat tak apa Kalau video tu kita masukkan dalam slide lah Kita tunjuk dia dia orang minat ke Ataupun orang kata um, tak perlu kan ya bro Ataupun Itu yang kata dia kalau dia minta kan Kalau you kata saya ada video ni eh, Kalau dia kata kami nak tengok You buka lah Kalau dia kata tak nak tengok tak payah lah <laughs> Tapi you <laughs> ada Benda tu you, ha- you have Ah, yes. Proof that you go Sebab kita kadang suspek you pergi tak ke sekolah ni kan ah. Ada kes yang dia kata dia pergi 8 kali ke sekolah hmm. Tapi kita suspek oh dia punya data tu ter- terlalu sedikit Jadi kita rasa dia tak pergi kot So kita apa We postpone dulu dia punya viral And then we check with the school uh, Dan betul dia hanya pergi dua kali saja. <laughs> Oh. Uh, jadi evident perlu supaya you uh, inilah kalau dia kata bila you perlu uh, ni uh, tarikh-tarikh saya pergi itu ada evident yang you bawa lah masa viva tu kalau dia orang nak tengok sama juga yes. modul kan kadang-kadang saya pun pelik dia buat modul tapi modul tu dia tak bawa kan kita nak tengok lah what is kind of your module actually, actually saya recommend untuk simpan semua soal asli dia yang beratus-ratus tu Sampai habis uh, konvo, baru buang dia kata. Yalah, betul lah. Sama juga interview punya transcription pun you kena bawa lah yang, yang sample pun boleh lah. Supaya at least dia nampak you buat those transcription. Kadang-kadang kita tak, kita macam suspek you ambil daripada thesis lain dan sebagainya lah kan. Uh. Alright. <coughs> Because uh, examiner ni, they are, sometimes they are very Uh, they are very detailed, eh? meticulous So, dia nak tengok Okay, don't say I don't have time Don't say I have no money Because as Zemina kata We don't have time to give you a PhD eh? Okay <coughs> Be prepared, confident Impressive answer nah, Impressive answer meaning that you read a lot eh? Jadi dia boleh kata oh ini Mengikut pandangan uh, Apa Uh, scholar A ya, kata kata uh, kata apa mengikut pandangan scholar B ini ini buku yang saya baca bla 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 jadi you have to give a very impressive answer pada to convince the examiner lah sebab kadang-kadang uh, examiner nak tahulah you baca apa buku apa kadang-kadang yang paling bagus buku examiner tu yang you baca kan <laughs> kalau saya jadi examiner lah, Prof Ramli punya buku saya baca uh, dan Uh, ni Prof Ramli mengatakan bla bla bla. Uh, jadi seronok lah saya kan sebab you baca buku saya Professional look uh, presentation mentally emotionally stable uh, What happen if you are blank? Uh, ini satu masalah eh. Pasal you kena ada ni lah copy eh uh, Sometimes uh, you need to see and uh, you know to think So you have to have something in front of you Don't over depend on the powerpoint eh. Kadang-kadang uh, electric uh, out ke battery out dan sebagainya So make sure you bawa juga hard copy of your ni lah powerpoint tu If technology fail what you do Practice make perfect And finally justify justify everything must be justified eh. 